how honest the book is. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm very, very surprised at the honesty of the book. And, uh, you know, it's just in your face love. <laughs> and love in your face. So, um, and I think that that's part of what we have to go through, understanding, uh, to be able to understand love is to be honest with ourselves, you know. And so Mike is outlining that for us. Um, like the way that he um, explained about and the practical way that he's following the, the mistakes that we usually, the seven myths, that the mistake that we con constantly uh, think and uh, we relate to love with that uh, specific situation. Like uh, that is normal that love hurts, it is normal that you, something that you have to receive, or something like uh, you have to find for it, so, uh, looking for it, I can start like that part. And I liked a lot one expression that he had, and I was actually looking for it because the words are like a little bit like a, like a, he plays with the words. It was the balance in between love and love. And for me, it is so deep, love and love. So the balance. So he said the when you have love, without love, it's like a dictatorial. Uh, situation, dictatorial, yeah. Most, and if you have law, without law, it's going to be a chaos. And um, and I has been <laughs> thinking about that. How can we find that balance? Well, what where was that? I've gotten from the book so far is, is well, since coming here and really understanding the difference between love and attachment, that sort of you know, just really explains that and gives so many different examples. And I was able to apply it to you know, situations or relationships, intimate relationships in particular, in, in my past. And, you know, it was like I was just reading about myself <laughs> in the examples, so it was really quite helpful give you all this attention, look how cute the baby is with the toy, and so you're immediately getting that reinforcement, and then all of a sudden someone will take the toy away from you. You experience sorrow, right? It's the first sign of attachment. And then, and then another kid comes into the picture, right? Kids two, three years old, they're playing together, and this is your toy. This toy makes you happy. You get the attention, and, and then, you know, the other kid takes the toy away, and you hate that child for taking your toy, <laughs> And then everybody says, do you know, but you have to share. And then all of a sudden, you know, this, this, this misunderstanding comes up and you start to put your walls up, the trust, and, and that's when, you know, when I guess, we, you know, love turns into attachment or whatever, the misunderstanding starts from there. Mm -hmm. I found that to be very interesting because, you know, I just bought my goddaughter a toy. <laughs> I was like, no, babe, let me take it back. When you... Um, you think you're in love, but uh, or, or you're like in that uh, honeymoon yes, period, mm -hmm. but really it, you lose yourself. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You lose yourself, mm -hmm. so it's how you don't lose yourself, mm -hmm. so you can maintain a relationship, you know, based on not attaching, but in, in being you love who you are, being you know, yes. I'm love. Yeah. We idealize, right? We idealize. Uh -huh. yeah. we idealize. I could connect yeah. with that. Yeah. Idealization yeah. is not love, I realize. And even yeah. putting your walls down is not love. Because yeah. sometimes we think that letting our walls down and connecting with a person, oh, this is it, but it's not really. <laughs> you just made a choice to let your guards down for that particular person. So Safe funny. enough yeah. to let your guard down. Mm -hmm. But it, they didn't even let your guard down. You <laughs> let your own <laughs> guard down, you know? You felt safe. Um, I think it's wrapped up, you know, with our vision also, you know. Um, our vision of ourselves is wrapped up in that idealization, in that image of, you know, um, I meet somebody and this is who I'll be with them. And so you start to, of course, that fairy tale, the whole life scenario, but also like your identity, and this is what the whole thing is about, mm -hmm. is how our identity is wrapped up in this illusion of love that we have. And um, and what's our identity, the vision that we have of ourselves, and I think that that's very key. That you know we start to <laughs> visualize, and this is in all relationships, mm -hmm. also um, not just with a, a loved one or somebody we meet and date or marry. Um, you know, so so who am I in that relationship? Mm -hmm. And so that that crumbles eventually because they can't make you who you are. So 
That's true. So it's very nice because, first of all, he starts off in the beginning explaining that there's a small challenge <laughs> in trying to understand love. And do you guys remember what that was from whoever read it? What was that small challenge? It's actually a big one. What? I'll repeat the question that described love. In the beginning, yeah. he talks about there's a small challenge in trying to understand love. Do you guys remember Ego? what that small mm -hmm. challenge No, it's the big one. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, you wouldn't even think of this unless you read the book, really. Uh, it's on page four. And he says that, he says the small challenge is, is that you can't describe love in words. He says we're very limited by our vocabulary things in the duality mm -hmm. and when when we're here and we're learning we look at love and attachment sort of as opposites but he does say ultimately love has no opposite mm -hmm. the very fabric that holds together all that exists at all levels it's like an invisible matrix that matrix that connects everything and everyone mm -hmm. that's deep <laughs> underline too. That's a deep concept. What love is, but it's an honest tool. It's an honest bridge to really look at yourself honestly. And he says, as the book progresses, you will begin to see more clearly how you have been brilliantly taught <laughs> how not to be yourself. Right? And this is the examples we were given about how we come into the world and we're giving a toy and we're taught belief systems. And so this starts to define our life in every way and who we are. So it's a, it's a brilliant conspiracy theory. Everybody has a speciality. But understand that everybody also has that side where, um, and so uh, not to go into it in a pessimistic way, but to know that no one can live up to what we want them to be, and we can't live up to what we wish we should be right. in an external way, you know, in a spiritual way, of course, it's, it's um, so maybe that's the first one. When you be alone, when you grow old, and that fear is what keeps you with the other person. Yeah. Not because you have any clue about love. That's the attachment. That attachment. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. And of course, that will be, um, you know, uh, very, very interesting because the ego uh, takes on a lot of different masks. And um, it's hard to find. Yeah, it's hard to Because find. it sneaks on you and you're like. So, um, yeah. yeah. So I, I'm going to do what he says, somebody said to me the other day that was much older, and she said, you know, the way I described um, to my parents why I never got married, something along the lines like, but I, I am everything that you wanted me to marry, something like that. Did that make sense? Mm -hmm. I just said I can't remember. Mm -hmm. yes. And that, was, that struck me so, you know, so strongly, yeah. so profoundly, you know? Um, that we should be with that for ourselves because if we if we weren't like that with some you know if we were with somebody who wasn't if we were with somebody who treated us sometimes the way we treat ourselves we wouldn't stick with them <laughs> yeah. you know we would divorce them we would fire them right, we would right. whatever you know right. and so this idea that this you know this beautiful relationship starts with the self you know and it's a very nice way am I treating myself the way that your aunt and uncle are treating each other it's a nice visual. Mm. Yeah, very nice. Thank you for, for Thank sharing you for that. Yeah. Of that. <laughs> From my point of view, anyways, because I appreciate, um, you know, first of all, that it's not another class. You know, like I often like feel like um, you need to we need to go into it each of us and talk about it, and then it becomes very real in our lives. You know, how many books can we read? How many classes can we attend? And so although it's very simple and very casual, this idea of just being in it and sharing and, and very real experiences um, you know, makes it real for us. And I think that that's very, very beneficial. Um, and so just this thought that, um, you know, again, how am I implementing or just reinforcing the myths in my life? You know, and the pretense. Am I pretending, you know? Um, and how am I pretending and where is the pretense? You know, why is it pretending existing? And Mike says, according to Mike, we're in constant pretense. Constant pretense. So I can, how can I start to identify what I'm pretending and start to get rid of it? 
And I think what automatically will emerge is, is love.